In this video, I'll show you how to solve the Alex problem called drawing a heating curve. So buckle up, this is kind of a tricky problem. I'm actually gonna walk through two examples of this problem just because it is kind of tricky. There is only one version of this problem. Alex doesn't really mix it up at all, but there's a, just a lot of different potential in terms of the data that Alex is asking, a lot of different variation in what the problem itself is actually gonna end up looking like as you solve it. So like I said, I'm gonna do two different versions. So this problem is giving us a starting temperature of a particular substance it's giving us a specific amount of heat that is going to be added to that substance and it's also giving us a lot of data and it wants to use this graph here to sketch out a heating curve of temperature versus heat in units of kilojoules per mole so here's the strategy that you're going to take as you're solving this problem number one first thing you're going to do is figure out what phase are you currently in at this initial starting temperature. So I am at 50 degrees, and my first job is to figure out what phase am I in when I'm at 50 degrees. You're gonna get that information by comparing the melting point, the boiling point, and the starting temperature. The melting point is the temperature where the substance goes from solid to liquid, as I'm sure you know. The boiling point is where it goes from liquid to gas. If you're in between the melting and the boiling points, then you are a liquid, you're in that space. Spot. If you are below the melting point, you're still a solid. And if you're above the, the boiling point, you are a gas. So I, at 50 degrees, I am below the melting point of 70, which means that I am currently in the solid state. What phase am I in? For me, I am a solid. The next thing that we have to do, step number two, is identify how many degrees, so how, in terms of Celsius, how many degrees Celsius do we need to get to the next, the next phase, the next phase, that next phase change. So I am currently at 50 degrees, and what I need to figure out is how many degrees, how much do I have to raise the temperature to get to the next phase change? Which for me, because I'm starting as a solid, uh, my next phase is gonna be a liquid, so I wanna figure out how much of a temperature change do I need to get to that melting point? So for mine, starting at 50, going up to 70, that's a temperature change of 20 degrees Celsius. Okay, so let's scoot over uh, to the other graph, to the graph really quick, because I gotta have the graph on a different slide. Your graph is gonna be set up starting at your initial temperature. Uh, the the y-axis is gonna be configured just for you. And we're gonna be starting at 50, now I just determined that my substance has to go up to a temperature of 70 to get to that first phase change. So I know that I need to raise the temperature up to 70 degrees from 50 degrees. And the, uh, so I'm gonna kind of sketch a line here. I need to get up to this 70 degrees point. And the question is, how much heat is it gonna take for me to get up to this line, this 70 degree line? If it only takes one kilojoule, then I'm gonna sketch a line that looks like that. If it takes three kilojoules to get up to 70 degrees, then I'm gonna sketch a line that looks like that. So the next thing that I need to figure out, and I just wanna be clear, this gray line, you're not gonna draw this on your Alex graph. I just kinda of have that there as, as a reference point. That's not the line you're gonna draw. So the next thing that I figure out, step number three, is how many kilojoules actually i'm going to write this a little bit different we are going to figure out how many kilojoules it takes to get that 20 degree temperature change and we're going to do that using the heat capacity so we are going to use the appropriate heat capacity and i'll talk about what it means by appropriate because we've got three options there use the appropriate heat ca capacity to find how many kilojoules per mole to, uh, are needed to raise the temp by whatever we just calculated. For me, it was 20 degrees C. So use the appropriate heat capacity to figure out the kilojoules per mole that you need to raise the temperature by, in my case, 20 degrees. What is the appropriate heat capacity? What phase are you currently in? I am currently in the solid phase, so that is the heat capacity that I need to use for my particular calculation. If you were in the liquid phase, you would be using this heat capacity right here. Now, side note, one of the things that's super annoying about this problem is that Alex is giving you temperature 
temperatures in units of degrees C, your temperature axis is in units of degrees C, but it's giving you heat capacity in units of Kelvin. Uh, now, I do want to let you know that in the heat capacity equation, Kelvin and degrees C are interchangeable. So you don't have to do any actual unit conversions between degrees Celsius and Kelvin for this. Just kind of as a side note, if we're talking about temperature change, which we are in heat capacity, the temperature change in units of Kelvin are the same as the temperature change in units of degree C. I do want to add though that the temperature in degree C is not the same as the temperature in Kelvin. You will probably already know that, but the, the change in temperature in Celsius is the same as the change in temperature in Kelvin because their uh, scales, those two temperature scales have the same incremental changes. So uh, anyways, going back to this, we're going to use the appropriate heat capacity based on whatever phase we're in to figure out how much heat we need to change the temperature by whatever we just determined, in my case, 20 degrees. So that calculation is going to look like this. We're going to take the appropriate heat capacity, 34 joules per degrees Celsius times mole, uh, and then I am going to multiply that by my desired temperature change, which is 20 degrees Celsius. I have got a calculator handy, not on the screen, and it is 30, 34 times 20 is 680 joules per mole. That is the amount of heat. Again, I'm going to double check my math there. That is the amount of heat in, kilojo in joules per mole that it's going to take for me to get that 20 degrees temperature change. Now, going back to this, why did, we, why did we just go through the process of figuring that out? The problem is asking us to figure out how much heat we need to get up to this 70 degrees temperature change. I determined that it was 680 joules per mole. Notice that this unit is kilojoules per mole, so that's going to be 0.68 kilojoules per mole, that's how much heat it takes me to get up to the 70 degree line. Uh, so this is 0.5. That means this right here is probably about 0.7 ish. So it's going to take me about this much heat to get up to this spot on the graph. So I'm going to start with a line that looks kind of like this. Okay. Now, once we get that first line drawn, we're doing pretty good. We're going to go back to this right here. Now, once we get up to 70 degrees, which is where we are, the next thing that's going to happen is this phase change. We've got ourselves up to the melting point. Next thing that's going to happen is the phase change. And now what we need to calculate is how much heat do we need to actually carry out that particular phase change? How much heat for the phase change? And that information is going to come from the either the enthalpy of fusion or the enthalpy of vaporization, depending on whether you are melting. At least Alex is nice enough to kind of group these numbers together uh, if you're melting or if you are boiling. I am melting in my particular substance. I started as a solid. I've made my way up to the melting point. So that means I am melting and the enthalpy of fusion is the amount of heat that is needed for that particular phase change. So my delta H of fusion is 12 kilojoules per mole. That's how much heat I need for that phase change. And that means that I am going to be hanging out at this 70 degrees. This is my right here. This is my melting point. I'm going to be hanging out at 70 degrees and melting for a total of 12 kilojoules. That's how much heat is going to take to get this whole entire thing melted. So I started at about 0.68 right here. I'm going to add 12 kilojoules per mole just to get that phase change finished. That's going to take me to 12.68 kilojoules per mole. That's how much heat it's going to take from here all the way out to... Ooh, all the way out to the end. That's it. Like I've run out of room. The problem told me I can only go to 10. So that's, that seems kind of funky. Uh, and that's where it would stop. That's what this whole entire problem would look like. When I got up to 10 kilojoules, I would still be in the process of melting and that, that would be the end. That feels kind of a bummer. Like that's where it's being left off. Like it kind of feels like the problem isn't done, but it is. 
Like I said, I'm gonna give you two examples of this because this is definitely a tricky problem. So I'm just gonna erase some of the stuff that I've written here in red. The strategy is gonna be exactly the same for this problem no matter uh, what problem you're looking at. We're just, we just wanna look at like a little bit of different data just to kind of give us some variety. So I'm looking at another Alex problem. This one, we are starting at negative 50 degrees Celsius. We are gonna have uh, 15 kilojoules of heat available to us, and I'm gonna change these numbers as well, just to make them correspond, uh, make them make a little bit more sense. So our melting point for this one is going to be negative 35 degrees Celsius. Our boiling point is gonna be 25 degrees Celsius. Our enthalpy of fusion is going to be nine, and our enthalpy of vaporization is going to be 22, and our heat capacities are 30 and 46, and 54. And I promise this one is going to be a little bit more interesting. So step number one, we have to decide what phase we're in. We're going to do that by comparing our current temperature to the melting point and the boiling point. If we are below the melting point, we are a solid. And that's where we're starting again. If we are in between the melting and the boiling point, we would be a liquid. And if we're above the boiling point, we would be a gas. So our next question is how much, how much temperature change do we need to get ourselves to the next phase? So if we're starting at negative 50, the next phase that we're gonna get to, uh, which is gonna occur at the melting point, that is a 15 degree temperature change. So that would be a 15 degree Celsius temperature change. And what we're gonna do is use the appropriate heat capacity based on what phase we're in, the appropriate heat capacity for us, it's a solid, to figure out what, how much temperature we need uh, or how much heat we need to actually get that 15 degree change. So we're gonna take the heat capacity, for this one it's 30 joules per degree C mole, and we are going to multiply it by the amount of temperature change that we're looking for, which is 15 degrees Celsius, and that is going to give us 450 joules per mole, but remember we want this in kilojoules, so this is gonna be 0.45 kilojoules per mole. Uh, next question, how much heat do we actually need for the phase change? That is going to be our enthalpy of fusion. It's just gonna be that number, so that's gonna be nine kilojoules per mole. And we can go ahead and like, let's go ahead uh, over on this other graph, even though the temperatures aren't lining up quite right. And let's go ahead and we'll, we'll sort of, sort of plot it. So for this particular system, we're starting at negative 50 and let's just kind of rewrite this axis a little bit, negative 30, negative 20, negative 10, uh, no, I almost wrote negative zero. We're starting at negative 50. We're trying to get up to our melting point, which is negative 35. And that's going to take, oh no, that's going to take about a half of a kilojoule per mole up to our melting point of negative five, which is right here. Take about a half of a kilojoule a mole. So it's going to be like that ish, kind of looking like that. That's a, that's a really steep line. And then once we get to that point, it says that it's going to take us about nine kilojoules to undergo that phase change, about nine kilojoules. So that's going to take us about out here to nine and a half. Like that's how far we're going to get. Now this particular problem, we're allowed to go all the way out to 15 kilojoules. So we're going to keep going. How much heat do we need for the phase change? That was the last thing that we figured out. Now uh, that we've undergone our phase change, we are currently in a liquid. So we can kind of take a pause and ask ourselves again, okay, now what phase are we in? We are now in the liquid phase and we're basically just going to kind of repeat this process. How much do we need how many degrees celsius do we need to get up to the next phase that next phase is going to be 25 degrees celsius so how much of a temperature change do we need to get to the next phase and that is going to be the difference between our current temp our current temp is, uh, what, is our, what is our current temperature? Our current temp is 35, and our next temperature is 25. So that is a difference of 60 
degrees Celsius. That's a huge difference. How much uh, degrees C do we need to get to that next phase? That's going to be a 60 degree temperature change. Ooh, that's a big difference. So question number seven, we're going to, again, use the appropriate heat capacity. We're looking now at the heat capacity for a liquid because we are a liquid to find the amount of heat in units of kilojoules per mole to raise that temperature, to raise it uh, as we need. So our desired temperature change is 60 degrees. We've got this heat capacity right here, uh, 46 joules per degrees C mole. And we wanna multiply it by our desired temperature change, 60 degrees C. 46 times 60 is 2,760 joules per mole or in units of Kelvin, that's going to be two, uh, excuse me, in units of kilojoules, that's going to be 2.7 kil, 2.76 kilojoules per mole. That's how much heat it's going to take to raise the temperature up to that next spot for a phase change. So we are going to go 2.76 we're going to go up to, I'm not even going to mark the axis here. We're just going to say, let's call that our 60 degrees Celsius right here, even though we know that this is no longer to scale. And that's going to take us, we decided that's going to take us about 2.75. So we'll say that's one unit, that's two. We'll say that maybe 2.75 is out here. This is a little bit tricky because the graph don't, doesn't work out quite right. But we're going to get another slant up like that that's taking us up to that last temperature change. And the last question that we have to answer, we've got to keep going because we still haven't got to 15 yet. We still haven't got to that 15 kilojoules per mole yet. So the next thing that we need to do is figure out how much heat do we need now that we're at that phase change temperature, how much heat do we need for the phase change to, under, be, uh, to, to carry itself out? That is going to be looking at the enthalpy of vaporization, the enthalpy of the liquid to solid phase change. 22 kilojoules per mole, thank God. For this last step, we would just move over by 22 kilojoules per mole uh, or however much space we have left on the graph. This is definitely going to take us to the end of the graph. So this example here is probably about as difficult as the problems could get. But like I said, you're just going to follow these steps. Keep following these steps and graphing as you go until literally you just run out of room on the graph and that's where you are going to stop with the problem. Good luck with this one.